Professor Dirk de Rosa, we're very fortunate to have you here on eCancer TV to talk about one of the emerging topics in non-small cell lung cancer, and that is you're talking about intratumor heterogeneity. Now, one would imagine that was a disadvantage, but I gather it could be an advantage. Indeed. Uh, we know for many years that when you look at the tumor, the primary tumor in itself, that the tumor is heterogeneous. So that means when you look in histological slides, you have some areas where you have a lot of cancer cells, other areas where you have less cancer cells, areas where you have good oxygenation and vascularization, and other areas where it, doesn't, it isn't the case. Now, if you think about that, it's logical to imagine that the, those areas within the tumor, which uh, actually differ from each other, may need another radiation dose or another drug dose in order to be eradicated. So actually what we did, we could, by just taking one FDG PET scan before the treatment, identify which regions within the same tumor are more or less susceptible for radiotherapy or for chemo radiation. Are you saying that PET gives you that ability to say which tumor can benefit from the higher dose? Uh, we can, on the basis of the FDG PET scan, for with the probability of something like 80%, indeed identify which areas within the tumor are less susceptible for the current treatments, and hence they should be treated with a higher dose to only those little parts of the tumor which need those higher dose, and a normal dose to the other parts, and as a net result, we can increase the probability of tumor control and eradication of the cancer cells without increasing the toxicity to the normal tissues. Now, you're talking about uh, intensifying the dose of radiotherapy, this may or may not be accompanied by chemotherapy. You wouldn't change the chemotherapy? Of course not. I mean, this is very complementary because basically what we show, we can identify which areas are more or less susceptible. So basically, we can identify which areas need a higher dose, be it with radiation or something else, and which areas don't need it. So it's a kind of redistribution to give more to the ones who need it and less to the ones who don't need it. And how effectively can you intensify to those regions and also how effectively can you avoid dose to organs at risk? Well, for that purpose, we are running now a phase uh, two randomized clinical trial. In the first instance, together with the NKI in Amsterdam, and within a couple of months, it will be a European trial in, because we can really do that from a technical point of view. And that is because we don't increase the dose to each part of the tumor, but we decre increase the dose to the parts who really need it. And hence, you can really avoid increasing the toxicity, which is not trivial. Now, the, the other part of your question was about FDG PET scan. We are doing in the phase two trial also translational research in order to improve the ability of PET by, do, by looking at other PET tracers than FDG and also looking at other means like diffusion uh, uh, and perfusion uh, CT scans of the tumor. Mm. How much of a margin uh, of, uh, of di cancer destructiveness can you get to literally hope to cure the disease and, and not do much collateral damage. To give you an idea, in a normal circumstance, we give something like 70 gray in 35 fractions to those huge centrally located tumors. Most of those, those patients have stage three disease. Now we can even more than double the biological effect, so double the dose to those areas in the same magnitude as we give now with stereotactic body radiation. So from a theoretical point of view, we could increase the local tumor control, say something like from 50 to 60% to something like 90%. And that is the statistics where the phase two randomized clinical trial is based on. Now this is very optimistic for the future of uh, radiotherapy for patients mm -hmm. with non-small cell lung cancer. Uh, how much do you predict this could improve the outcome in patients in terms of uh, length of life and quality of life? Well, first of all, uh, the aim is to increase the cure rate further on, of course, because this is still a major problem. And if everything goes right, we could improve the net five-year survival by something like 15 to 20 percent. So long term, without increasing the toxicity, because the aim and also the, the, the calculations are that way done that we never increase the dose to the normal tissues. At the same time, this concept of intratumor heterogeneity is also applicable to drugs because we and other people have also uh, made drugs which are coupled together with um, positron emission scans together with the Free University of Amsterdam we have done that 
And uh, we can also see that some parts of the tumor have a higher uptake of drugs compared to other uh, parts. And you can imagine that you can only irradiate or give a high dose to those parts of the tumor where a dr drug isn't reached and uh, other parts of the tumor where you don't see a drug uptake, well, you, uh, you, you give radiation and to parts of the, of the tumor where you, you, you do see the drug, you can decrease the, the radiation dose. So intratumor heterogeneity has also a, a possibility uh, for increasing the efficacy of drugs as well. Now, how do you do all of this? You, you're potentially getting a double whammy to improve the targeting, not only mm. in terms of where the tumour will respond mm. anyway, but also where it hasn't benefited from the drugs. How much do you think uh, that can do for the patient in the long term? Oh, ag again, I, I think that if, if this concept, so th I mean, from a, from a radiation therapy point of view, together with the drug therapy of view, we should be able to reach something like 85, 90% of uh, the tumors to be locally controlled, first of all. And second, the same concept can be applicable to me distant metastasis as well. But of course, this is on, on a long run. How easy is it to do FDG PET scanning and indeed labeling uh, of, of the drugs to see where, they, where the drugs are, go are going? How easy well, is all of that? Well, uh, like always, if you do the research and development, it's quite difficult. But at the point we are uh, looking now with FDG PET scans and the technique to increase the radiation dose, this is feasible in any center who has experience with uh, intensity modulated radiation therapy, first of all. Second, the labeling of drugs. Um, at this point, uh, it, it is possible that one centralized center makes the drugs and export the, centers, export the drug to other centers in, in the country or abroad. So yes, I think that these types of, of trials, and, and if it would work, uh, would be broadly uh, applicable throughout Europe, yes. Clearly, uh, a, a very important emerging modality for treatment, but what should busy cancer clinicians make of your ideas right now? Well, this is, uh, at this moment, it's not for routine practice, but I hope that uh, within, let's say, three to four years, we will see that this concept will gain acceptance and will be applicable in, in clinical practice on a large scale. And what I should also stress it is that the concept of looking at intertumor heterogeneity, both with radiation and with labeled drugs, will also decrease uh, the cost because you do a further individualization you only use one pretreatment FDG PET scan and you can increase the dose to those parts who need it of radiation within the, the tumor just by application of the normal uh, IMRT technique, so without increasing the cost because it doesn't increase the number of fractions of radiation. And from the point of view of the drug, you can really see whether the drug is taking up in the tumor or not. So that means that you can decrease the cost uh, at a very long uh, run. And this is also not trivial in these times, I think. And which groups of patients are likely to benefit the most from this? The patients where we have the most problems now, that's to say patients with tumors of a diameter of four uh, centimeters or more, or the patients with stage three disease. Mm. So uh, all in all, the, the bottom line you'd like doctors to take home from this is what? Bottom line is that a tumor is not one bag of cancer cells. It's very heterogeneous, both from the sensitivity for radiation, chemotherapy and targeted agents. And by investigating this, we will improve the outcome, so the survival, without increasing the toxicity and even by decreasing the the costs. And you can improve the level of optimism that both patients and doctors yeah. can have about their disease. Basically it's further individualization not only on the basis of the patient characteristics, on the characteristics of the tumor cells but also within the tumor, within the so-called society of, of the cancer, we can look at some subgroups with different sensitivities to all different modalities we have. Dirk, thank you very much for talking with eCancer TV here in Lugano. Thank you very much.